Welcome to another edition of Computer Train. I'm really excited about today's show because as you can see, we've decided to take the train out of the station. We're here at my home away from home, the Valle Verde campus here at El Paso Community College. One of the things that I noticed with some of my students, especially those with disabilities, is they need some specialized hardware and software. I had touched upon that in a previous show, but we have a complete department that's going to help these students out with some really interesting software that I wanted to show you. So come on, let's check it out. It's time for Computer Train, the weekly TV program that trains you how to use your computer. With your host, El Paso Community College faculty member, Russ Meyer. The Computer Train has reached its destination. We're here at the Valle Verde campus, my home, and we're specifically here at the Center for Students with Disabilities. This show is going to be about some services that they provide specifically related to computer training. But we're here with the director, Jan Lockhart, and we wanted to give her a chance to describe all the services that this center provides. Jan, thank you for taking some time and describe some of the services that you provide here. I want to welcome everybody to come to the center. My name is Jan Lockhart, and I'm the director. I'm very proud of this department. We have really grown. This semester, we're serving almost 675 students, providing services for them. We provide uh, not only the technology lab, which you all are going to go be seeing, right. but we provide interpreters for the, for the deaf students. We have note takers for students that have the need for sc writing, scribing. Mm -hmm. We have uh, tutoring that one-on-one -on -one for all students that uh, come through the department. They get three hours of tutoring a week that's specifically for them. Mm -hmm. So our, our tutors are well trained. And uh, we have another, uh, many options. It depends uh, with what the counselor decides. We have right. four counselors with the department, and they are the ones that help to decide what kind of accommodations the students need. So really individualized. So it's all very individualized. Uh, and so any student that feels like they need to have some kind of an accommodation in class, maybe they just need extended test time. Right. And they can come through the department. Uh, maybe they need the, uh, a reader, mm -hmm. perhaps. So it depends on what the nature of the disability is. It will determine what kind of uh, support services we'll provide them. Excellent. Okay, well you heard it. They provide all of those services, including the computer part. So let's take a moment and let's head over to the computer labs. We're currently in the Center of Students with Disabilities at their actual computer lab where they assist students. You might be able to hear some of that in the background, some of the software that they use. We brought in a resident expert here. We have Chris Garcia who works here at the lab. So Chris, what do, you, what do we do here in the lab? How do you help the students? Well, our main purpose is to have the assistive technology ready for them to use on a daily basis. Uh, we're here to train them on, on the assistive technology. It can range from low vision software, uh, learning disabled software. Uh, there's many types of disabilities that can benefit the students. That's kind of the reason we're doing this show. I had done one show and I demonstrated a few things and then one of my students had some software and I was just like, I need to research this a little bit more. So yes. we're turning to an expert to explain all the different types of software that help students. So let's get started. Sure. The first application I'm going to describe is called the Kurzweil 3000. What this allows the student to do is that they can scan their printed text into the application and you, the result is seeing it on the screen. On the main toolbar, you have a read option, which will allow the student to hear their text out loud. By Mark Twain, Soldier Boy. Privately to himself. And as you I can am see, Buffalo Bill's horse. So they have to scan this uh, text first. Yes. Oh, okay. Or if they have a PDF file. Right. So they can download they can files import. or bring one with a flash yes. drive or something like that. Yes. Oh, okay. So it's either scanning or, or importing the file. Right. Um, as you can see, as it's reading, you can follow along with a highlight. It highlights a sentence, and what's being read at that particular time is highlighted in a different color, which is green. So they can constantly be following along. Uh, this is very beneficial to someone uh, with a learning disability, such right. as dyslexia, uh, because they can focus on, on the words. Mm -hmm. And does the software allow the reading pace to change for particular types of students? Yes. There, there are different. Uh, paces that you can choose from. Right now I have it set to 145 words a minute, but you can decrease it 
to the minimum of 50 words a minute, or you can increase it to 300 words a minute. Wow. And I, I don't know if you'd like me. What's the, what's the pace of an average reader like us? What would that be? You I would know? say between 145 and 150, oh, okay. between that range. Um, the other features you have that are great is you can double click a word. Spent. Come up here your, to your definition icon, and it'll bring up the definition of that oh, word. That would be very helpful. And this can be read out loud. Spent. Verb. Spent. And it does a pretty good job at finding if, if the word has more than one meaning, it, it'll do a good job at it'll showing it. Based upon the context of the text. Use yes, or yes. Put out. How it's used. Expend. Spent an hour exercising. And the nice thing about this is it can be repeated as many times as the student right. needs it repeated. Uh, you can get the synonym of any word, and it'll give you different synonyms. And this can be read out loud Spent. as well. For any of the features. One, you use all of, consume, drain, drop. So uh, those are some of the main features. Mm -hmm. um, you also have, with this new version of the Kurzweil 3000, you can convert any text into an audio file. Wow. Which is basically by going into audio file. And so they can just play that anywhere they are. They don't necessarily have to be on a computer. Yes. That's like their car or yes. iPod, iPhone. You can sync it to any media device. Oh, that's excellent. And it's just by going into this feature here, clicking OK, and on your desktop, you have an output folder where it goes to. Oh, wow. So from that point, you would transfer that file to any media device. Mm -hmm. So very, very powerful feature. And you can set the reading pace before you save the file, or yes. is it defaulted? No, you, you can change You can them. set it before yes. you create the file. Oh, that's interesting. You can do it within the application, which is here. Or when, if you're in the audio format already, right. you have an option to create the I mean, to change the, the pace, the pace oh, excellent. as well. Um, you also, this program will read in different languages as well. Uh, for example, taking a Spanish class, uh, I have an example of a Spanish textbook. By going into my tools and options, you can actually change the language of the program. Right. So I'm going to change that to Spanish, apply that, Click OK. So now, when I click Read, Feliz cumpleaños, it's going to read in Spanish. Un cuento de primavera, libro 4, capítulo 2. Tía Magdalena, era un día cálido. And you, have, you have the same features you would. So basically, it's using the rules of the particular language to pronounce the words. Yes, yes. Well, that's interesting. And, and you can still use the definition feature, mm -hmm. the synonym. You don't lose any of those oh, functions right. at all. And you can create audio files That's as well. So this is one of our more widely used And programs. can you install, is that installed only on the computers here, or could you install it in a computer lab somewhere else? But I suppose there would have to be someone that understands the software. Yes. Uh, basically, they're, they're installed in-house, you know, in our labs. Right. Um, but if for any reason, um, you know, we can install special it case somewhere. Type of special things. cases, yes. We have other software that we can... Right, and that's what I was alluding to earlier, yes. is I had a student who was using some particular software in our labs yes. that lent me to the idea to come here and research more. Yes. And, and that's, it, that's never an issue, you know. We usually help out the other right. labs as well. Next on the list is Magic Magnifier. It's a desktop magnifier for low vision students. And once it's executed on your desktop, basically it magnifies whatever you're seeing on the desktop. As large as you need it, huh? Yes. Oh, very interesting. And you can navigate through the entire desktop, through files and folders. It works with the internet. We never had an issue with it not working. Compatibility with, yeah, issues. Compatibility. And it's just meeting what the student needs, what type of magnification. 
this particular version goes all the way up to 16x. Wow. So, and that's 3x. I was going to say, what so, would it look like at 16? One it, pixel? It's, <laughs> and we do have students that use Oh my gosh. X. I can see that it would magnify, but it seems like the larger you go, the m more difficult it would be to navigate around the screen. Yes. And, and that's when the larger screen comes into play. Oh, because, okay. Uh, right. You know, you get more viewing. Yeah, with it using a larger screen. Yes. So related to that screen, is this just a regular computer system that anybody could buy, or is it some kind of specialized hardware also? No, it, it's a basically a basic computer just that you can buy. Just a regular computer that we can know, all buy. Um, of course, the specs are a little higher. Right. Know, RAM and, and the, the memory. Hardware, yes. And this software, this is not free software, though, right? This no, has this, to be purchased. This has to be purchased. Uh, mm -hmm. For students, there's agencies. Oh, okay. El Paso that will help you provide the provide the software. Oh, okay. If, if you can justify, so they can have it at home. Yes, mm. yes. Um, some other features is you can we have enhancements such as mouse enhancements, cursor enhancements, and color enhancements. Mm -hmm. And just to show you a few, if I click on the mouse enhancement. It changes oh, my pointer. So it makes the pointer much larger also. And you can configure that. If, you don't, if you're not comfortable with the green, you can do a target red. Oh, so it has like a crosshair about yeah. exactly where you're pointing to. So depending on what the student is comfortable with, we can mm -hmm. change the, the mouse. That would be helpful because uh, in, in general with computer users, they're not specific enough about particular areas on the screen. So I can see how that crosshair yes. would, would really let them know where they're clicking. Yeah, it, it's a really beneficial feature uh, to some students. You can also change the cursor. So if I was to be in a Word document, I just have an example. Right now I have it set to a blue oval, so as I'm typing, it's following. Oh, okay. So this... That uh, might be good for normal users. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but for someone you know with low vision, you know, um, they can constantly be following along yeah, within their. Yeah, instead of kind of strain and trying to yes. find the cursor, it shows them exactly yes. where they are. And this can be configured. You can change the shape and the color mm -hmm. to meet the need of the student. That would be as very well. useful in programs. Yes, and also finally, you have a color option where you can actually change the contrast of the desktop. Mm. Oh, okay. And that's for not just vision, but if they have like color, color blindness blind, issues color blindness or they see big, colors different? Um, a big one, you know, we can configure the colors to meet their needs. Based upon their particular... Yes. Oh, that's awesome. And that's just one example, but we have several mm -hmm. examples that you can change. Yeah, what would be st strenuous for eye eyes would be normal for them. Yes, right? that's, a, that's a great way to look at mm -hmm. it. So those are enhancements that uh, that are used with the magnification. Yeah, that's definitely stuff that the Windows version can't do. No. <laughs> and also, we have a speech uh, capability with the program. Much like in, the in, other one? Embedded in the program. This just reads out loud to you what you're doing oh. on the computer. Oh, okay. It's a screen reader. Oh, okay. So once it's speech actually... Page, level, speech, split button, full speech. For example, if I hit the Windows key... Menu, start screen, desktop, column 1, it's row 1, 1, Word 2013, Excel 2013, it's, oh. it's letting me know exactly where, where your focus is. And if I was typing something, it would be repeating exactly the keystrokes. Oh, okay. I'm typing. And at the end, you can even go to the extent of having a paragraph read out loud to you. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of get a feel of that's what you meant to type. Or right. If right. there are any errors. Yeah, like proofreading your document. Yes, basically, uh, yes. Something like that. Yes. The next application is called the Duxbury Translator. Really simple program to use. Um, you can type within the program, or you can import documents mm -hmm. or any um, rich text files. Um, basically, this is a simple document. Um, and by going into your file, you can translate. And it translates into the Braille language oh, for the wow. blind. 
So now from that point, we can send it to the embosser and have it printed out. Yeah, they have an example here. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but we have an original file. This was a biology type file. And then now we have the Braille equivalent of that. Are there a lot of students that use this? I, I, with this speech recognition and the text, it doesn't seem like there'd be a lot of, I was thinking that, is that going to be a lost art of people who can read Braille because of all this newer software? It, it is considered um, old technology, really? you know, with the advanced right. software. Uh, but you have those cases where, you know, it's, you it's needed still have at those. times. Yes. Yeah, that's interesting. Yes. And you have to have a specialized printer, obviously, for this. Specialized in printer. I remember when I came here one time and I saw it printing, and I didn't, had never seen it before, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and, you know, I've been around computers forever, and it's just things I don't know. It's, it's amazing. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's simple as that. Uh, and if needed, you can even go back by translating again, and it goes and back. sends it back to the normal to the text. normal text. So you can go back and forth. And Excellent. And, and do that. The the training process is not is limited. You know, right. it's not that extens extensive. So um, you know, anyone can learn learn the software. Really simple to use. So Chris, what else we got to d demonstrate? Well, we have some hardware now that we can show you. Okay, I was uh, looking at this first. What does this device do? This is actually called a CCTV, and it's a standalone magnifier. Anything that you place on the tray, you hit a button. It's connected to the monitor, mm -hmm. and when you click the button, you can see it on the screen. Oh, okay. And does that connect just with a, like a regular USB cable like many devices now? It, it's not a USB cable, but it's a VGA. Oh, okay. VGA so it's the monitor, like a monitor the cable. Uh -huh. Device to the back of the right. monitor. Um, and, and it's really simple to use. Anything, it can be any type of printed text. Um, and then you have different colors you can choose from. And then on the knobs, you can actually change the text color. Text color. And then you can also do the background as well. And does it zoom like the yes. other programs we're doing? It has a zoom. Okay. This is used uh, a lot of the times for testing purposes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when a student comes in with a printed text and they need right, to do the instructor. they need to do uh, work on the computer mm -hmm. they can use both at the same time you know they can read their question on the test and then go back to the computer and answer the question answer the question program and then go back to question two so, uh, so a on. particular student may be using these simultaneously then. yes yeah absolutely yes. yeah and that's a great thing about depending it. on their particular needs yes um, seems like we have some great services here yes it, and a lot of students take advantage. But I wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, fully aware of until I talked to this one student that was using some software. Yeah, it, it can be a great uh, encouragement for for the student. You know, so when we first talked about the computer system, you said it was a normal system. But then I was kind of, <laughs> as you were demonstrating, I'm noticing this keyboard. Yeah. So this is obviously it has the same layout. It looks like to me, but definitely not the keyboard that I use. Yes. So what are some inter uh, interesting things about this particular keyboard? Well, this, the focus is the larger font. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it's very easy to read the letters. Yes. Someone or someone that has uh, low vision um, can definitely benefit from a keyboard like this. And I noticed the size of the uh, actual keys themselves seem a little bit larger. They, they are. Mm -hmm. the, the keys themselves, the text, and then the background color. Right. Uh, you can choose different background colors. I wonder if that would slow my typing if I had to stretch a little bit more for a particular key. I, I haven't heard that issue, you know, from mm -hmm. students, and I've used it. And, Have uh, you? It seems like a normal. 
So while we're on the topic of keyboards and maybe a mouse, what are some other types of, uh, do you have other keyboards or you've heard of other keyboards and differences that help students? There are several types of keyboards. Mm -hmm. um, there's one-handed keyboards that you're just using one hand oh, really? to type. Is the layout of the keys different then? It, it's very different. Oh, okay. And the, the whole layout. So there's a whole training yes. for one hand, like a one-handed typer. It's basically, typer. they call it the five-finger um, method. Okay. Because all you're doing is using five. One hand, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. But there's several, uh, several ty types of mm -hmm. uh, keyboards out there. And the, uh, the mouse, uh, obviously that's a normal mouse. Yes. What, what are some differences with uh, a mouse that we might have? With mouses, we have uh, trackballs, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically you're using a ball. Right. You know, someone. The uh, way I described it to my students, basically a mouse turned upside down, so now your hand is moving the ball. Yes. Instead of the mouse moving that, the ball. That's a good mm -hmm. example. Uh, we also have levers. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of holding onto a ball, you're holding onto a lever. Oh, okay. And control, kind of like similar to a joystick. Oh, okay. And, and that's how you're controlling the you're navigating through the computer system mm -hmm. and then files and folders interesting um, but there, there's a whole yeah we could be here a while yeah, to describe there. it all <laughs> if a student comes in here with a particular request uh, are you guys able to fulfill that so they might need a particular keyboard that you don't have will you go research it and, and purchase it yes uh, and, and we do work with the community as well. Oh, okay. Um, so if you come in and have general questions or you want to get trained mm -hmm. on specific technology, we'll be glad to. You know, the community college mm -hmm. does a lot with dual credit now. Um, are the dual credit schools familiar with understanding that their students can come now to these types of labs and services? We're, we're getting the word out. Okay. And, and making sure they understand that. Because I'm sure come. they're, you know, in the high school, you'll have the same kind of students that we have that have needs that they probably may not be aware that we have those types of services. Yes, in, indeed. And, and then when we're trying to reach out to them and, oh, and get them in here. Because so particularly can... at this campus, we have an early college high school actually on our grounds. Yes, so. we do. Excellent. Well, Chris, I really, really appreciate taking your time and just uh, demonstrating all this software for us. One question I had is, do we have these types of services throughout the city at our other campuses? Yes, we do. We have a lab at each one of our campuses, mm -hmm. Valle Bedard and Mission, and uh, Northwest and Trans Mountain, and the Rio Grande campus. Excellent. So we have services citywide for any students that are, you know, have a problem with computer technology. Yes, we do. Excellent. Well, it was a fun episode. We really touched on a lot of software that can help students. We have readers, we have magnifiers, we have braille printers, special keyboards. Uh, if you've got a need, we definitely have uh, an answer for you. Uh, it was a fun episode. I hope you enjoyed taking the train out of the station for one day. Uh, we might do that more often, depending on how this goes. So I hope to see you on another episode of Computer Train. <laughs> I told you, man. One take. I'm one take rust now. <laughs>